Hello everyone, JRDL96 here with a brand new unboxing. As you can tell by the title, it's another WWE shop related unboxing. Now the last WWE shop related unboxing I did was for this, the World Heavyweight title, back almost a year ago. But the last t-shirt related unboxing I did was a few months prior to that when I did this shirt, the Eddie Guerrero shirt, and the Bray Wyatt Fiend shirt. Now, a lot has changed since those two unboxings. <laughs> Back then, Vince was still technically the head of creative. And then, you know, over the summer, you had all the shit went down with him. And then Triple H took over. And now Vince is back in the fold again. Like, oh, great. <laughs> more chaos is unfolded in the in more turmoil. But in the middle of all that, I decided to get three t-shirts. But for some reason, they decided to ship them all separately for some reason. Which I found odd, but okay, whatever. So let's start with this one. Uh, this one in particular. And it's pretty evident. Hopefully, if I can get it open. So let's get to this one. And that is the Bray Wyatt Revel and What You Are t-shirt. This is a large, by the way. Uh, as you can tell, obviously, I was really happy when uh, Bray Wyatt returned back in October with those weird uh, QR codes that they kept, you know, sneaking in during shows, which I found pretty innovative, especially, you know, for to hype up someone's return and the way they built that up and, you know, the weird, you know, quotes like, who killed the world? You you did feed your head and all that. And then Bray Wyatt came, eventually came back. And then he had that weird feud with LA Knight and then that abysmal, you know, match that, at the Royal Rumble recently. <laughs> Just, what the hell? Come on, Bray. Do better than that. Book him better than that, man. He's a very creative genius and you're fucking him up every single fucking time. Don't fuck this up. Seriously. So anyways, let's try on this shirt now, shall we? So this is what the shirt looks like. Very nice, very cool. Nothing on the back, it's just the front that has the, the design. I noticed that there's the little bunny from the, uh, uh, you know, little cryptic, you know, videos from the QR codes when they were hyping up his return and everything. Who killed the world? You did. All right, there's that one. Now, originally, prior to the Royal Rumble, I was gonna do this shirt last. But since the th incident happened at the Royal Rumble, I'm gonna go with this one first. And this is a pretty special shirt. Uh, all righty. You know the first time that this person's gotten a t-shirt in their like their own merch this is the first time that this person's ever gotten you know uh their own merch and i'm surprised that it took them a while to finally do you know merch for her and i gave away who it is i kind of gave away who it is uh so here it is the nikita lions ready to pounce t-shirt as you can see the cool little design you have a little bit of a like a lion tiger there you see her doing the karate kick like she's auditioning for the karate kid or you know cobra kai or something and on the back you have ready to pounce and it's a part of her you know somewhat of her character being a lion i guess i have no idea but you know mostly she became famous for her the way she does her she pins her opponents <laughs> you know to the point where drake decided to follow her on instagram like on instagram and stuff which i found hilarious but trust me, but, you know, unfortunately, uh, recently she, unfortunately, suffered, sustained an injury, a torn ACL and a torn meniscus. But what's weird about it is that, you know, the way they wrote her off, like she got attacked backstage at NXT and then she announced, oh, um, she's out for ACL and meniscus. And then two days later, for some reason, she posts on her Twitter and Instagram a video of her in the gym, like she's training in the gym. And I'm like thinking to myself. Girl, if you have a torn ACL, you shouldn't be 
doing anything at all. You better get you better be getting that thing operated on immediately. I don't know what she was doing, uh, or if this is any storyline related, or if it's just related to an injury she sustained the year like over a couple months prior that signlined her for a month. I have no idea. But hopefully, recently today, she posted on her social media that she was in a hospital getting, and the surgery went well. So, uh, hopefully, she comes back very soon. But anyways, enough rambling about her and gushing about her. Let's try on this shirt now, shall we? So, this is what the shirt looks like. Very nice. Very cool. I like the, you know, the simple design. She's ready to pounce. <laughs> And stuff. I'm very happy that she got her own merch. I'm surprised it took her took them WWE so long to finally give her her own merch. You know, I, I can't even I can't even you know be I'm not that flexible to do a kick. <laughs> you know, to do like the martial arts martial arts kicks that she does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my god. It's so about I'm like about to do the hua. <laughs> okay, but um, I didn't buy this shirt because of mostly the viral pin she does. But of course, I I wanted to at least also support her because I think she's a pretty cool uh, personality on on TV you know, on NXT and everything. I hope she does well for herself and eventually gets to the main roster and stuff. She's got she's got something, you know. But, uh, you know, anyways, now let's get to the main course. And <laughs> especially after what happened at the Royal Rumble, this is very interesting. And I have a lot of uh, things to say about this particular storyline uh, and stuff like that. And I think you have an idea of what I'm referring to because of the big thing that happened at the very end of the show. And that is the Bloodline, We the Ones shirt. Now, this is, it has a lot of like Samoan tribal, like, you know, design on the inside of the lettering. And then on the back, it has the, you know, the finger point, like, because they do this all the time with the We the Ones and stuff, so. Man, do I have a lot of things to say, especially about what happened at the Royal Rumble and my personal theory. So anyways, let's try on this shirt now, shall we? So this is what the shirt looks like. Very nice. They're, it's really well. I like the, you know, the simple and I like the fact that they really, you know, put in that whole Samoan, you know, aspect to it because that's you know their ancestry and stuff you know roman and the usos solo and you know all that we the ones <laughs> okay hopefully you know it's a good thumbnail for the, i'm trying something different with the thumbnail i'm going to try to include each shirt in the thumbnail going to be a little bit more creative with the thumbnails instead of just showcasing one of the shirts but anyways that's really on the, it on this unboxing so to quickly recap we got the bray wyatt rebel in what you are shirt and then the, the nikita lions ready to pounce shirt and then the bloodline we the one shirt now speaking of the bloodline let me discuss the crazy events that have unfolded at the Royal Rumble this past Saturday. I'm recording this on the 31st of January. So this is prior to the, the SmackDown after the Royal Rumble. So obviously the whole big, you know, storyline that has been going on for the last eight, nine months is the whole thing with Sami Zayn. Him trying to be a part of the bloodline, the honorary oos, you know, that kind of thing. And the whole storyline with Sami and then Jay being like, oh, I hate this fucking guy. And then eventually, like, you know, when, you know, at Survivor Series War Games, like, Sammy finally, you know, gets it in Jay's head. Like, oh, God, this guy's not bad. And Jay started to feel very oozy. <laughs> that segment when they were like, lately he hasn't been very oozy. <laughs> that whole segment is probably one of my favorites. Because of the fact that literally 
Sammy is so, like, so funny with some of the way he delivers some, when he says certain things, the way he delivers it, and just, it makes everyone in the room start cracking up. Like, he made Jay start cracking up, Jimmy was laughing his ass off, and Roman was, like, trying so hard not to laugh because he's supposed to be the villain here. And that's what he's been doing this past, you know, few years. And and all it took was a, co a pandemic to finally, you know, turn him heel, which I find surprising. They should have done this a long time ago. And look what he's doing for himself. He's doing very well for himself. 800 plus day reign as universal champion. And then recently with the whole thing with Kevin Owens and get, trying to get into, you know, Sami Zayn's head. Like, dude, don't be a part of this. And, you know, then eventually it led to the, the trial, the court trial of Sammy and, you know, on the 30th anniversary of Raw. And then for some reason, Jay comes to Sammy's defense. And that, you know, sw sways in the favor of, you know, Sammy. So now comes the Royal Rumble. After Roman de successfully defended the title against Kevin Owens, they start to do a beat down of Kevin to the point where they handcuff him to the ropes. And Roman, you know, tells Sammy, pull the trigger, essentially, and hit him in the face with the chair. Which is something they don't do on TV anymore. But that's kind of like one of the giveaway, the dead giveaways of like, oh, the, something's up. And you could tell the confliction that Sammy's having. Like, he doesn't want to necessarily do this to his one of his friends. But, you know, even though most times, they always turn on each other at the end. But it got to the point where, you know, Roman started, you know, pushing Sammy, like, to do it and do something. Like, this guy doesn't care about you. He weighs you down like an anchor. You, When you're part of the bloodline, you're part of, you own the whole world. If you're not, you go back to that jackass shit. Which I thought that was funny because it's referring to the match that Sammy had at WrestleMania last year with Johnny Knoxville. But uh, finally, after enough, you know, finally Sammy kind of had enough with Roman's, you know, gaslighting and, you know, throwing his weight around. And he does the Seth Rollins chair shot to the spine to the one of the loudest pops I've heard in a very long time. And, you know, that and then Sammy looks at Jay and goes, I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. And Jay is like, what are you doing? And then Jimmy kicks him, and then they beat him down. And But for some reason, you know, Solo, Jimmy, and Roman are beating down Sammy. And Jay is very conflicted. And he's just in the corner like, what am I, what, like, he's like in disbelief and shock. And then they, everybody notices Jay, and they're like, what are you doing, Us? What are you doing? He ain't your brother. We are. And then Jay walks out. Jay walks out. It was like, holy shit. And then, you know, it got to the point where Roman, you know, started hitting Sammy with the chair and then rips the shirt off to the point. After that, the crowd had enough and said, fuck you, Roman, which was fucking great. Like, holy shit. Now you have a reason to hate the motherfucker. <laughs> because you've been booing him for years when they were trying to shove, you shove him down your throats as the good guy, the next face of the company. And now you have every reason to hate him. And that's how the end, the you know, the event ends. You know, Sammy and, and Kevin and the Owens in the ring pretty much just laid to waste. So now where do we go from here with the bloodline? So what do I think about Jay and why would he leave? Because I feel like he is, you know, but he felt betrayed in a way because he went to bat for Sammy during the trial. Like he went all, he went all out. Put all the evidence together in favor for Sammy. He did all that. He stopped Solo from trying to do the Samoan spike. It's like... And then, in return, Sammy hits Roman? Like, that's probably what Jay feels. And Or he, I see some people saying, oh, he sees Sammy and... J like, Jay sees himself and Sammy because that's how it all started. Sa Jay didn't feel like this was right. What Roman was doing was right. And he felt conflicted. And that's why he left. But I feel like the, the the first the thing I said, like he feels like Sammy betrayed him, and he's not gonna you know show it until let's say if they decide to do a match at Elim Elimination Chamber where Roman faces Sammy for the title, and it looks like Sammy's about to win, and then Jay costs Sammy the match. 
you know, I feel like that is probably where it's going to leave. But if not, who knows? Because I feel like we're if we don't do anything with this, we're going to have another Batista, Randy Orton, Daniel Bryan situation where Cody Rhodes, where everybody was wanting him to win, which he did. He's at the wrong, he came back at the wrong time when a storyline that's not involving him is too good and they want someone else in favor of him, I feel like. I I just have that bad feeling. And and some people say, oh, you could have Sammy and, you know, have Roman defend two titles, both the WWE title and the Universal title. Cody clearly said the WWE undisputed Universal title, so that means both. He's the... Because there's no way, if they decide to do the double, you know, two titles, there's no way Roman's going to lose both. Roman's going to win at least one. There's no fucking way that they would do that. You know? So they're going to have to probably blow this off at, you know, the next event. And then, you know, finally go, okay, have Kevin and Sammy go after the Usos. And that gives you a good reason for the, you know, especially if Jay costs Sammy the match at Elimination Chamber. This is, I'm predicting this prior to the, the SmackDown before, after the Royal Rumble. But if they decide, okay, let's have, you know, Jay cost Sammy the match at Elimination Chamber and something like that. And then eventually leads to Jay costing him at that. And then, you know, Kevin and Sammy go after the Usos and go after the tag titles at WrestleMania. The, and also, The Rock is not going to be in this storyline. Why would he need to be there? That boat sailed a long time ago. That boat last year sailed a long time ago. And what do we got instead? Brock fucking Lesnar. There was no need. There's no need for The Rock. You could have him cameo. That's about it. Rock's got a, the XFL to deal with right now. <laughs> so he's... he's, And I know I'm trying to downplay it, but... I, like, what does The Rock gain from this? Because the last time he was in a high-profile match, he got hurt. He tore his hernia and pelvic muscle in his match with John Cena. In the twice-of-a-lifetime match. Do you think The Rock's going to want to risk it again? Against Roman? Do you really think, especially when he hasn't really wrestled in a very long time? I don't think so, honestly. Like, I don't think it's worth it. You know what I mean? I don't really think it would be worth it. Yeah, they're trying to play with, play along with the whole rumors about The Rock, and they're trying to play along with it, but I just don't feel like The Rock will be there. And The Rock doesn't need to be there. Just my personal opinion. And some people said, oh, Jay's gonna go call The Rock. That doesn't make sense. Like, it really doesn't make sense. Like, I don't really see that happening. But, eh, you never know. Sometimes they like to pull the surprises. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, that's really it on this. My thoughts on what happened at the Royal Rumble and, you know, my unboxing for the WWE shop. The, you know, the, the Bloodline, Nikita Lions, and Bray Wyatt. Now... The next unboxing I might do in the future, and I've been thinking about getting this for a while, and that's another championship belt, replica title. And it's the a mid-card title, a classic one, the United States title. I, I don't know what it is, I just like the, that, the design of that championship. So you never know, I might do that in the future, but I don't know when exactly. But the problem is I'm not going to have any room for it. <laughs> so why would I need to buy it right now in the midst of all this? But you never know. That's just an idea that I have in mind. But right now, I'm not sure. But anyways, that's really it on this unboxing. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, share this video with your friends. Be sure to ring that bell to be part of the notification squad. Be sure to check out my Instagram because I make quads and Markiplier, Jack Septiguy, even myself. Artist Renak is the cosplays on there, so go check it out and be sure to check out my Tumblr and my Discord in the description as well. So until next time, JRDL96 signing out, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.